Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The good gentleman from Allegheny County, the minority leader, says, what do we have to show for it? Here's the answer. Pennsylvania unemployment rate as of June 20th of 2014 hit an all-time low since we took office at 5.6%, and when we came into office, it was 8.2%. We have, in fact, provided over 250,000 family-sustaining jobs in the last three years. Our 5.6% unemployment rate is 0.7% lower than the national average. How about this? In Western Pennsylvania, United States Steel has invested $500 million to replace one of its Coke oven batteries in the Mon Valley. Allegheny Technologies is spending more than $1.2 billion to build what is essentially a new steel mill in the Pittsburgh region. The Hershey Company invested more than $300 million in the expansion of their manufacturing facility in Dauphin County. Urban Outfitters will be investing $450 million over the next five years as they expand their headquarters. Caterpillar announced it would renovate its distribution center instead of moving out of state. Comcast, thousands and thousands of new jobs with their headquarters in the city of Philadelphia. And let's talk about the refineries, the important work done with refineries in the Philadelphia area. These are important facts, remember. Approximately 3,000 direct jobs and more than 25,000 indirect jobs were threatened and all of the refineries have been reborn and are thriving. The fact of the matter is, what we have to show for it is family sustaining jobs for the citizens of Pennsylvania. And when you have that, you have good communities and good schools. Now, folks, we are here to talk about facts. It's always easy to throw out pejorative terms, but it's hard to dispute the facts. Let's talk on the first part about expenditures and how we have been compassionate and prioritized with the $29.1 billion of taxes that we are taking from the citizens of Pennsylvania, how we are spending that hard-earned money. Keep in mind, this chamber supported changing the name of the Department of Public Welfare to the Department of Human Services, and we recognize that many of the expenditures in that area need to be maintained and increased. This particular budget, listen to this, with respect to intellectual disabilities for intermediate care facilities, we are now at $152 million, or community-based programs at $149 million, or for community waiver program, well over a billion dollars all for those citizens with intellectual disabilities. And on top of that, for autism intervention and services, we are close to $20 million, or early intervention at $130 million, or, or with respect to community-based family centers, an additional $3 million, and childcare services at $155 million. Medical assistance in and of itself is in, the, is, is in the billions of dollars with respect to those most vulnerable in our society, in particular those seniors. Now, in education, let's talk facts, important facts. In this proposed budget, education will be at its highest ever for K through 12 at $10.3 billion. And let me also please recount the history with respect to public education. These are facts, folks. In the last year of the Rendell administration, 
$1.5 billion was spent in state tax dollars. In the first year of the Corbett administration, $9.3 billion was spent in state tax dollars. The term cuts is mythical. It's inaccurate. We have in continued to increase steadily and with responsibility to the taxpayers that foot the bill. Spending on state public education, K through 12, such that in the 14-15 budget, we now stand at $10.3 billion. That is real money. And those are real investments. And please understand, like many of you, I have three children in public schools, and they are getting an outstanding education. And at the same time, we recognize that there are different opportunities for different kids all over the state, but we have continued to improve in each area. Now, let's talk about these massive, quote unquote, from the leader, these massive corporate tax cuts. I'm sorry, but where? 9.99% is still our corporate net income tax rate, the second highest in the nation. And let's talk about the capital stock and franchise tax. Under Governor Rendell, for eight years, Governor Rendell reduced the millage in the capital stock and franchise tax from 7.24 mills to 2.89 mills, a reduction of 4.35 mills. I'm sorry, but both Governor Ridge and Governor Rendell recognize the fact that there should not be two taxes on employers in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which is why he continued to phase it down from 7.24 to 2.89. And in his last proposal of eight, Act 48, which was passed in 2009, he phased it out to zero. Now, last year, we slowed up that phase out, and we did it for two years. It's going down to 0.67 in this past year, and it's going to go to 0.45. But we have done nothing different than what was done under both a Republican governor and a Democrat governor. Because we are responsible, and we know that family-sustaining jobs come from not being punitive. The last time I looked at my neighbors when they worked for places like United States Steel or Allegheny Technologies, they're doing great things for their families and they're contributing to their communities in the United Way, the Little League and their church. These are good people who work for good employers. And this notion about closing the Delaware loophole Governor Rendell had eight years to quote unquote close the Delaware loophole. Guess who closed the Delaware loophole? We did. In fact, in fact, in this budget year for the first time ever, revenue is coming in from the closing of the Delaware loophole and it goes to its full face next year. Now, what we are here and have to understand as stewards for the taxpayers, we have from our, from our citizens a personal income tax. We take out of our hardworking individuals' pockets, we take out over $12 billion in this particular budget. And with respect to the sales tax, it's over $9 billion. And the corporate net income tax will bring in well over $3 billion. And the gross receipts tax will bring in over $1.2 billion. Taxpayers, in fact, need to be respected and they need to be balanced with respect to priority spending. What we have been doing for the last four years is responsible governing with three budgets done on time, unlike the previous eight years. And the result has been jobs, 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 family staining jobs in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I ask everybody to please vote for this exceptionally responsible budget, House Bill 2328. <laughs>